So today's video, I want to talk about uh, the workout space I've built for myself in my backyard. I've had different people comment, ask me about different details of it, kind of what I've designed. Uh, I wanted to go through why I built it, um, how I built it, and some of the different things I've added uh, since we've kind of put this little workout area together. Basically all this is, is we did a little bit of landscaping project. Um, as COVID hit, we we're all stuck at home. And when I redid some of the backyard, had the backyard done, I asked them to drop me some gravel here and make me this little rectangular area for workout. And I've added things throughout the uh, COVID period and over time, just building uh, different parts uh, to be able to uh, supplement and complement my training at the Knights Hall when I can't get there or when I want to work out at home. And I'm lucky to have this space. I don't have the room inside my house for a lot of this equipment. I don't have the room inside my house for a gym, uh, for you know any kind of lifting equipment, so out here is where it goes. Uh, so I can use this basically three seasons and kind of into the winter, depending on how uh, determined I am. Uh, we'll start off with the Pels. So I actually have videos on how to build this Pell here. I'll put a link to it um, here so you can find that if you want. Uh, this here is a Pell design. Now the only thing I don't like about this is I actually used um, Tires off forklifts that I got for free, and uh, they're really, really hard, so hard that things kind of bounce. So I've actually thrown a couple other tires on top for axe strikes uh, to kind of give it a little more stickiness so it doesn't bounce back and hit me in the head. But this is a great pal for movement. Um, you, know, you can move around, it's got the smaller thing. You, you're not going for specific, like kind of high, mid, low. Um, so I like to use this when I'm doing more dynamic movement or I'm doing more like shadow boxing. Uh, this Pell here is a more traditional three tire Pell that you'll see a lot of the uh, Knights use when they're training. So you have head, body, legs, you can throw outside shots, inside shots. Um, and I use this one probably more than the other one. I'm working on technique or specific forms or uh, a specific pattern uh, with my sword strikes. So I like having the two different Pells. It gives me a dynamic uh, ability to do a little bit different training and I have the space for it. Uh, the one thing I do want to add is like a bob or a kick bag out here as well that I can leave out most of the seasons. Uh, just for when I want to do, um, you know, more uh, punching, things like that, uh, kind of change it up a little bit. But this 95% of the time, these cover all the striking stuff that I need to do. I've got as much space as I can to move around with it. Um, yeah, so that's kind of the striking center. Uh, we'll walk around here. So I've thrown a couple things that I keep outside. And all this stuff, pretty much most of it stays outside here, which is why I'm showing it. So um, just a medicine ball. So medicine ball, I made this using an old basketball, cut a hole in it filled it with sand, covered in duct tape. I think it's like 17 pounds, give or take, uh, which is a great a great weight. Maybe a little, little other than that, I can reweigh it. But Russian twists, um, you can also do a medicine ball, uh, pass with each other. If you take that big tire and lean it up over there, you can actually th throw it off it uh, for kind of wall uh, work. So this is a great piece, super durable, um, and it's lasted out here for two seasons out, outside. I just leave it in the winter, leave it next to my rail over there. Uh, a couple tires, they're not really doing anything, but sometimes I will lay out tires here to run tires through. I started recently using a speed ladder. Um, this one's a little broken. They're super cheap though, so if it breaks, I'll buy another one. Got the speed ladder over here uh, for ladder drills. Um, just working my footwork. I'm inherently a slow person, so doing uh, that kind of speed footwork and footwork helps me a lot. Kind of uh, dynamic movement, keep my head up as I'm moving and getting my uh, speed up a little bit. Uh, next up, the big tire. Um, so this is the big tire that I got. People ask me, where did I get these tires? I just called the tire shop. A uh, local tire shop down the road from us, Mr. G's, they're fantastic. They actually do all our tire swaps and things like that. I said, hey, you got any old tractor tires, big tires? He said, sure, come get what you want. This was the biggest one at the time. Um, it's great. So I use it for sledgehammer work. Um, I put a video up on this a while ago. I'll link that here as well. This is a custom sledge that my friend made um, that you can fill uh, with added weight. So I really like it. Um, so you get, and it's not totally full. So as you swing it, um, you're going to get that uh, centrifugal force movement. So you're doing things like rotations like this. It's a lot heavier feeling than a regular uh, sledge, but you don't need that. That's a fancy piece that I had a friend uh, had me test out for them. They're nice enough to give this to me. Um, regular sledge works fine. So you just get a cheap sledge, get a tire, and you can do a lot of sledgehammer work. That's an awesome workout for our sports, an awesome workout in general. Uh, bigger tire like this, obviously tire flips, do those all the time, and then box jumps. So I use this for box jumps as well. Um, you'll see back here a little bit, I got a smaller tire. Um, this is if you have someone who can't flip the big tire or wants a lighter tire doing different work. This is actually the first one I got. 
Uh, and then I went back and said, can I get a bigger one? So I got the bigger one. Um, I'm hoping actually to upgrade to even larger tire at some point um, for tire flips, because that one is, is doable, uh, very easy, but um, I would like something I can really push myself sometimes. Working my way around, what else do I have here? A yoga mat, I always leave a yoga mat out here. Usually it's rolled up in the box, or I just leave it out hanging if it's dry. This is awesome, obviously for actual yoga stuff, but on the ground, if you need to throw it down to do push-ups, sit-ups, things like that, I just keep one of these out here. This here is my corner rail. Uh, this is a luxury. You don't need this <laughs> to work out or at your own like, kind of training place. Uh, I built it for a couple reasons. One, I wanted to emulate the rail that we, that we use at the Knights Hall. This is the exact uh, layout that they have. I decided a corner was the best way to do it. So I can train throws. I can train work up against the rail. If I have a partner, we can work on grappling, things like that. Um, and I can do either in the corner or on the edge, getting all of it. Uh, the other benefit for me is it just became a nice little table. I can put uh, drinks and stuff on it, which can work out as a place to store things. So it's kind of uh, dual use, but not thing you have to have. Uh, what else I got? So jump rope. So I always have a jump rope. This keeps, goes in my box. I like to keep that. That's a nice warm up or a nice during uh, Tabatas or circuit work. Do a lot of jump roping. Um, perfect push ups. So this is, I've had these probably for oh, 15 years maybe. Uh, these are like a little gimmicky workout thing. So when you do a push-up, it helps you, you actually rotate on it. Uh, I, I keep these out here just because the ground is annoying to do push-ups on sometimes. And these are way harder than a normal push-up. So I get kind of the double benefit of the workout. And um, I set them up as like a station if I'm doing Tabata. So it kind of feels like that's my push-up station. So I just have these. I love them. They're pretty cheap. They're like 20 bucks. Um, and you can kind of get this cool push-up form. Uh, over to the, the power rack. So this is squat racks. This is uh, what I probably get the most questions about. Um, why did I build a wooden squat rack? What is it? Um, I will link um, below the, uh, the build for this. It's from um, a channel called uh, Buff Dudes, I think, that are like a workout family. And they built their own wooden power rack. They do a lot of videos on how to build stuff out of alternative materials. Because I was going to be outside and I knew that um, metal would eventually rust, I didn't want to invest in any kind of nice power rack. I saw theirs online. I said, well, that really is awesome. Uh, they were doing 400, 500 pound lifts on these, no problem. So I built mine, uh, but mine is, the only difference is mine is pressure treated wood. Uh, you'll see some checking in this and cracks. That's actually super normal with um, this kind of wood and doesn't, it doesn't go all the way through. It doesn't actually take away from the strength and durability of it. Um, this thing is great. I mean, I have 300 pounds of weights that I usually regularly use on it. It's super strong. Uh, we'll kind of go through the details of it because I think this is probably what people want to learn more about. So I have safety bars down here. These are adjustable um, so that if you were to drop um, when you're squatting or something like that, you were to drop the weight, it just gives you a safety spot or to fall. That's there. I also use these for tricep dips, which are great. Um, you'll see I have two bars. I got a standard um, weight bar and then the Olympic weight bar. Uh, reason for that is when COVID happened, I couldn't find weights anywhere, as anyone who might have been looking knows. Um, so I found this standard bar super cheap, and I had some standard weights, so I had a real lightweight set I could do like high reps on, until eventually I came across this. Uh, this is the Dick Sporting Goods uh, Special. So I think it's, um, it's 300 pounds of plates with the bar, and they're normally like 295, 295 bucks. You're basically getting a bar for free if you're paying a dollar per pound, which is what weights used to run. Uh, before uh, everything went up and up and up and up. These are great. Um, so the reason I bought this, it's super cheap as far as it goes. And as you can see, it's got rust on it. It's gonna get beat up. I don't care. This is my outdoor weight set. This is gonna get rusty. I'm just gonna use it and lift things, right? As long as it holds the weight, I don't care. Um, so I got this, my, you know, is the bar. It just stays out here. And then I'll spray it down every once in a clean it, but I'm not too concerned about it. It doesn't have to look pretty. It just has to work. Uh, there's a pull-up bar here, so you can do pull-ups on this. And um, that's, hard and I do them and I don't like them, but I can do that. Uh, let's show you how this works. This is kind of cool. So the way that it works is, you know, you can drop the bar down here to store it. But if you come in here and look at it, essentially this is just a set of plumbing uh, pieces and you can adjust it to whatever hole you want, screw the back onto it and the weight just sits on it there. Uh, so super versatile. You just have to keep the threads lubed with like WD-40 or something like that. And if they bind up, use a wrench. Uh, but I've had this out here. It's super strong. I lifted with it this morning uh, with my brother Seth, and I love it. So um, here, if you look down there, here's a weight bench. It's a piece of junk because it's being left outside. This is another thing I've probably had for 15 years. It was my little set in when I had an apartment inside. 
Um, so I leave it out here. It's got like rust marks on it. It's loose, but it does the job. And if it breaks or gets destroyed, I don't care. I can get another one for 50 bucks, right? So I'll find one on Craigslist. So cheap equipment if you're going to leave it outdoors as long as it does the job. Um, final thing over here we can go through is this is where I keep all my weights. This is a Husky toolbox. This was my armor box uh, until the wheel snapped off it and I couldn't roll it and I left it out here. Uh, you can get these at Home Depot. Um, I'm sure Lowe's another place has them well, but I'll see if I can find a link for it. The Husky makes one. So does DeWalt. They're essentially the same. I'm currently using the DeWalt one. I wanted to try it. I don't notice any difference, but they're relatively waterproof. So I can pick it up here and I leave all my weights in here. So I got a couple uh, dumbbell setups in there and then all my plates are just dropped in there. That's really it. I keep everything else in there, like my jump rope and everything else stays in here. Um, pretty waterproof. Um, I haven't had a lot of rusting a little bit. Like I said, I'm going to get that though. And I'm, I'm not really worried about it. So this will keep it here. And we've had a, a ton of rain, um, a ton of rain this year and nothing's gotten into this. So, uh, I find that works pretty good. It, I've got, like I said, 300 pounds of Olympic plates, 140, 50 pounds of standard plates in there. Plus the other stuff all stores in, uh, kettlebell stays in there too. Um, it's going to give me the whole dynamic work. I do a lot of kettlebell work. I didn't show that, but that's, that's a standard at the hall. We use that for a lot of our workouts. So that's pretty much the area, right? So I have it, I can do sprints and other things in here, uh, all types of workout drills, but it gives me a place that when I either can't get down to the gym to train, uh, cause the night's hall for me is about a 50 minutes away. So when I go down for a night, like it's, you know, 50 minute drive, two to three hours of classes, 50 minute drive back, this gives me ability to do this at home. Um, and also, especially in the, you know, the heat of the summer or the real cold towards the winter, you're training in different uh, environments and conditions, which helps condition your body to be able to fight in those things as well. So like I said, it's you know 85 degrees out today here. It's been hot all summer. I'm out here lifting in this with the sun on me at noon. Uh, I get to mimic a little more of those uh, harsher conditions of when you're doing a fight uh, and something like that. So if you have questions, uh, you want to know more, you want to ask why I use a certain piece of equipment, you have any suggestions for things that I should add, uh, let me know. Uh, again, this is just my space. If you have something different, um, you know, whatever you can do to find space to train, uh, most of us can probably find an area that they can put up a pal. So if you do nothing else, nothing else, get yourself a pal. Let's be one like that. You can tie tires to a tree. Uh, you could put up, you know, a stick inside your house that you work on. Uh, but that's probably the number one thing I'd say. You need that if you want to get good at fighting, um, you know, armored combat fighting. And then the rest of this is supplementary and stuff I've built over the years or I've collected to help myself uh, train and keep in shape so I can hopefully not get beat up too much in the list. Again, I'm Woodchuck Knight. Like, subscribe, follow, all that wonderful stuff. Thanks for watching uh, and have a great day.